uh, done without data. Data, they said, is a, is a, a, can, a strength, gives you strength to do so many other things. So uh, decisions based on data and analysis are often deemed to produce a better outcome. And providing decision makers with information is seen as an important development strategy. This is uh, from FAO 2020. Hence, the adoption of the Sustainable Development Goal, SDGs, reinforces the importance of science policy linkages. Management and control of transport system, transportation systems are dependent on data sources describing one, performance of the system, that's talking about measured average facility speed and so many other things. Two, state of system control, e.g. the current active uh, signal timing plan and so many other things. Because traffic managers cannot simply look out of a window and understand how well a large and complex system is performing. Therefore, the nature and quality of data streaming from available sources to a large degree dictates how transportation systems can be understood and managed. What's the scenario in developing countries or in developed countries? These countries have graduated from the traditional data streams for transportation system management, whereby infrastructure-based sensors passively detect vehicles as they pass selected locations in the area. We have six times on the, either on the road or on certain corridors that you know, monitor movement of vehicles on those roads. And it is from the movement of those vehicles that we get to know that, okay, 500 vehicles have passed this road within so, so time. This infrastructure-based passive uh, acquisition data paradigm has enabled a range of familiar infrastructure-centric cent control systems for functions like signal control, incident management, congestion monitoring. Of course, the information they get of the number of vehicles that pass will tell you uh, of, if, uh, I mean, of uh, the signal controls, how you control these signals, such that you don't allow uh, a green where there are no vehicles. So it's also, it has to get information that, okay, there are vehicles on the road, you need to give them more green than roads, I mean, or, uh, other roads that have you know, less vehicles. And of course, incident management, when there are incidents, you know how to manage incidents. You give prior information where you have a variable message signs that, okay, certain lanes are blocked because there, are, uh, there is an incident ahead, you know, so motorists will have to you know, take other routes in order to get to their destinations faster and without, uh, with less stress. Then, of course, congestion monitoring. Once there's congestion, of course, you know how to you know, uh, manage the road, too. They are combining the passive infrastructure-based systems with vehicles and handheld devices with increasing capacity of systematically collecting and communicating a broad range of probe data. Now, of course, you agree with me that uh, we have handheld devices, of course, that can be used or that are used uh, on the road for some of these uh, information or for some of these data. Probe data inherently describe the motion and state of uh, mobile entities in the system, as opposed to data describing entities passing fixed location. Vehicles capacities uh, capable of acting as probes uh, probe scans, uh, scans the full range of light vehicles, roadway and rail transit vehicles and freight carriers. Secondly, modern wireless communication technologies permit an active exchange of data and, uh, sorry, with and between vehicles, travelers, road, uh, roadside devices and system <coughs> operators. Of course, there are data exchanges between vehicles, between travelers, and of course, roadside devices, that's talking of uh, uh, fixed uh, infrastructures. An active paradigm uh, allows for a systematic 
yet dynamic and selective exchange of vehicle status and traveler behavior data. This is inherently different than the uniform capture of vehicle location and speed data generated through passive detection. Benefits of combining passive and probe uh, systems. Creation of a multi-source data stream that enhances the capability of current forms of system control or sig uh, significantly reduce their cost. Multi-source data streams enabled transformative forms of systems, system control and management. These transformative forms of management have the potential to increase system productivity and traveler mobility significantly, while concurrently reducing environmental and safety impacts. Where are we? This is where we are in this part of the world. We do our things, we still do our things manually. Uh, this picture here is a, a picture of uh, some, uh, I don't know if they are staffs or they are hired uh, people doing transport survey and projection. They go out, evaluators, thank you, enumerators. Yeah, so we still do things manually in this part of the world. You send out people, when in the advanced world, they use uh, so many, or so many uh, electronic stuffs. What, is, uh, what the institute wants to do differently, that's what NITT wants to do differently from what it used to be. To place human beings with sensors that's fixed and or mobile where applicable. To convert this set of staff to data analysts or scientists at the back end office, that's the data bank now, in the institute. The institute is already talking of uh, getting a data bank for transport. So all information got in from uh, some of these things they are going to be deploying, uh, deploying will go into the data bank such that once, uh, if anybody wants information or data from uh, transport, they can just go into the data bank and source their data, depending on which uh, data they want. Thus, enabling the real-time raw data processing into useful information for critical businesses, policy and travel decisions making by operators, government, uh, users, and researchers. NITT data architecture plan. Deployment across the national transport network mobile and fixed uh, infrastructures. What's the objective? To enable systematic data capture from vehicles, mobile devices, and infrastructure. To develop data environments that enable the integration of data from multiple sources for use in, tra uh, in transportation management and performance measurement. Reduce cost of data management and eliminate technical and institutional barriers to the capture, management, and sharing of data. Status of data infrastructure in Nigeria transport network. This, uh, uh, this picture you are seeing is uh, of a road in Lagos that's talking about Broad Street, Tafawa Valewa uh, Square. Then, of course, the other, the two lanes will take you to uh, Echo Bridge Marina. Then we have these two. And the seaport uh, terminals, the airport terminals. Data can be sourced from all these points. Yes. Now, what data? Travel speed, congestion turnaround time, incident or accident, pollution, noise or emission, volumetric data, passengers and uh, freight traffic, uh, affordability data, freight vehicle weight monitoring, then or parking, of course. Of course, if you move your car, what well, the moment you are leaving your house, you are thinking of, as you go out, the first thing you think of is, if I go out, where do I park my car? So all these are you know, necessary. 
what technology do we deploy? We have the D DSRC, that's dedicated short-range communication. We have the CCTV and sensing technology, the Bluetooth technology, the blue, uh, probe vehicle, the radio frequency identification technology, GPS and satellite communication, infrared cameras technology, and so many others. We have the inductive loop too, and the rest. Uh, categories of crowdsource data, third party aggregated crowdsource data, social media for public engagement, the internet as a sensor, uh, dedicated platforms for transportation systems management, probe vehicles, Bluetooth technologies, this is how some of them work. Then the pneumatic tubes, these ones are, you know, just put across on the road. Uh, just like the induct inductive loops. The inductive loops are buried. These ones are just on the surface of the road. The CCTV cameras and third party you know, uh, data. This guy is entering a bus. He has his card. He swipes. They take uh, his uh, fear. But of course, it's not just about the fear. It is recorded that Somebody has entered the bus. So at the end of the day, you know how many number of people have entered the bus, how many people you've conveyed for a certain hours or for uh, a whole day. But of course, you do this using our own local, local networks. That's uh, talking of uh, the Clo MTN and, uh, and the rest. The dedicated short range communication using uh, RFID tags and uh, their sensors. Then the way in motion. Vehicles don't have to, you know, the, uh, the trucks now don't have to, you know, go and stay. They are wait. Then that time they are wasting is something else. So they move over uh, uh, a device and their weight is taken into consideration. Speed radar cameras, all this. I think uh, I don't know if uh, FRSC has this. Okay. Mm. The future is here. The future we have uh, talking of uh, autonomous vehicles. Uh, vehicle to infrastructure communications and the rest. Uh, NIT division of the proposed uh, data bank. We have a system graphical illustration, then the traffic uh, management center. Uh, the funding will have to be from government, private interest, and of course the PPP team. Uh, systems engineering is an uh, in interdisciplinary approach and means to enable uh, the re re realization of successful systems. System engineering offers a framework for developing complex systems used in engineering proje uh, projects. The goal of system engineering is to successfully develop a system. Of, uh, okay. The step. I, I, I would suggest you skip the two technical areas, just explain oh, okay. we're going to have the presentation. Okay, okay. Now, uh, this is a system engineering process. Uh, the benefits are, of course, to consider the entire life cycle of the system, focus on stakeholder involvement, understand the problem uh, to be addressed, then address project risk as early as, as, early as possible. Uh, think global and act local. Of course, we have to look inwards now. What's our situation? And we start to you know, bring in uh, the things that will solve the, our own immediate, or immediate uh, I mean our own local uh, issues. I say thank you for listening.